I should just say, actually, uh, and actually, my clock uh, has just reminded me that both of you are you are able to take the opportunity of um, parliamentary privilege. So you are able to name organisations in this session uh, without fear of, of uh, legal challenge. My, my, the QC here is nodding. So um, uh, if you wanted to name the bank, Michelle, that uh, was not particularly uh, was was rather too welcoming oh to mules, and if you I'm want to name the company, now. you're welcome to do it. <laughs> I wish I'd known that sooner. God. <laughs> Very grateful to Channel 4 as well for, for commissioning the show in the first place because our show is not something that a commercial broadcaster would have approached. Um, it's, you know, to, it, BBC said no to it. It's sort of quite risky legally. It's only really Channel 4 that would have, would have um, commissioned the show. Potentially a little bit too easy to open a bank account. I set up a, a Twitter profile for the head of RBS. Why would somebody uh, pretend to be the head of a bank uh, for that long? And I mean, and then tweet. I think I tweeted, I've got a smelly bum bum, which was the time. <laughs> but at that point, that was when the account started to get red flagged. Yeah. And in the end, they, they refunded her the money um, that she'd lost. And Michelle, this is your almost last opportunity. If you want to name the banks that are a little bit too friendly to money in all accounts, you're very welcome to, to do so. We'd be delighted to hear that evidence, but uh, I'll Thank leave you. that with... Maybe off camera. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I need to just triple check everything That's before fine. I well, make any... <laughs> we, can, we, we can always work out ways to make sure you get the benefit of parliamentary written evidence. My clerk is whispering to me written evidence. We can talk about that, absolutely. It's some um, of the newer banks where, you all, where there aren't necessarily branches. It's all online. Interesting. We managed, with Airbnb, we managed to list the uh, offices of Airbnb on Airbnb <laughs> and get people to rent the whole office of Airbnb. And I think we put the, the, um, the person that was renting the property is Brian Chesky, who is the CEO of Airbnb. And they didn't check it. They didn't stop it. We turned up to their offices with the paperwork saying we have rented this property on Airbnb and they, um, they didn't like to see us. They, did, they didn't let us in. <laughs> the, co the company in question is CPS who are based in Cardiff and they are, I think probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest provider of student accommodation. And we had so many stories about them. They, um, it's things like they would, uh, they would, they would say, "Oh, you've got, uh, you've got to pay for this cleaning that's got to be done at the property." And then the cleaning would be decide the, the the company that was doing the cleaning would be decided by them, and it would be owned by w one of their family members. It's it, all just a, you know, a real mess of a company, and they were not. Um, uh, they were not thrilled to see us uh, when, when we doorstepped them. Specific yeah, the, un university. the union was involved in that because we staged a rave outside their offices <laughs> and the student union helped us um, with that. Um, getting, And it turned out it wasn't that difficult to get disgruntled students down there, was it? It was, um, no, it was a very popular event. It was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> People pretending to be HMRC are banking um, uh, fraud, people pretending to be banks, text messages, WhatsApps. There are a lot of passwords that end up on the dark web, mm. web on what they call a sucker list, which is a nice, uh, <laughs> nice title for it. Get rich quick schemes, L looping people in uh, to a sort of romantic relationship and then taking money from them gradually. Mm. but it absolutely ruins people's lives. Uh, and, and to the point where, you know, people have lost their lives because of the depression and the shame that come with being scammed in these ways. And, um, and unfortunately suicide is, is a result sometimes of, of, of that shame. It's the reason I do the show and I'm very proud of the show is because it, um, I, it, it can shine a light on it and does it in a, in a fun and lighthearted way. But, at the core of it is a very serious thing, which is that people um, people are being wronged uh, on, a, on a kind of massive scale um, by these fraudsters and scammers. There are really basic things like changing the privacy settings on your apps, 
uh, never using the default settings on things like smart devices in your house. If you buy a, a, a Wi-Fi camera, always change the settings to make sure that the password isn't the basic password. Um, and then things like reverse image search. So um, this is something Michelle and I were talking about yesterday that we use a lot. And actually, we forget that people don't know about this, which is um, a very simple a simple thing you can do if you get a message from uh, somebody and it's got an image, let's say, on their WhatsApp, you can take that image and put it into Google image search and it will look to see if that image has been used anywhere else. And often mm. that will reveal that it's been used millions of times because it's an image that a, scammer, a, a group of scammers has used elsewhere. Very grateful to Channel 4 as well for, for commissioning the show in the first place because our show is not something that a commercial broadcaster would have approached. Um, it's, you know, to, it, BBC said no to it. It's sort of quite risky legally. It's only really Channel 4 that would have, Channel would have 4, um, commissioned Channel the show. 4. Channel 4. Channel 4. Channel 4.